अंबारे महाश्रमण ये धर्मा हे तु प्रभवा हे तुम तेषाम तथागतो यवदत तेषाम चयो निरोध तेवं वादी महाश्रमण तथागतो 
Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to allow a few more minutes for people to arrive and settle in, and then I'll say a bit more about the event today. Thank you all for your patience. We're delighted that so many of you are here with us. If you encounter any technical issues or questions, please send a text message using the chat box. We'll begin our event now. Welcome everyone to the 2021 Lapap Duchen Sutra recitation presented by the Kumara Jiva Project, a Kente Foundation initiative in collaboration with Siddhartha's Intent Canada and Siddhartha's Intent India. My name is Candice and I'll be your host today. Labab Duchin is one of the four major Buddhist festivals commemorating the life of the Buddha. And we're so pleased that you're here celebrating it with us today. For today's event, we will begin with an introduction to the Kumara Jiva Project from Jennifer Yeo, the Kumara Jiva Project Executive Director. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Candice. Um, I would like to uh, thank everybody for uh, joining this uh, uh, event. Uh, it's a great honor to be able to share the Kumarajiva project with you on this auspicious occasion. Especially thanks to Rumbiche for offering us this opportunity. This project 
Uh, so my friend, uh, an artist called Alicia, have prepared a video with me to introduce our project, and we hope you will like this video. Can you see it, Candace? Candace, can you see it? Yes. The Kumarjiva project is officially launched two years ago. It is an initiative of Kinsei Foundation. As many of you may know, the Kumarjiva project is named after a Buddhist monk, scholar, and translator, Kumarjiva. He's from the kingdom of Kucha, who is credited with the prolific translation of Sanskrit Buddhist texts into Chinese, including such texts as the highly praised and practiced Lotus Sutra, Prajnaparamita, and the Diamond Sutra. When Rinpoche talked about the importance of the Kumarajiva project, he reminded us that more than half of the world's Buddhist population is Chinese, and that the Buddhism exists in the Chinese language is extremely important, being what he called the source of the fire of Buddhism. Using translation to keep this fire alive, we know that we can make the fire even bigger as we do it. Rinpoche further referred to the Kumarajiva project as a motivation practice, one that is very challenging but crucial, adding that we have to do it as it would be so heartbreaking to have forgotten these sutras. A lot of Chinese friends are very moved by Rinpoche's vision and courage in initiating such a big project. In Chinese history, this kind of project hasn't been seen for almost 900 years since the Song Dynasty, the last large translation project supported by the emperor. Although the Chinese canon includes a vast number of Buddhist texts from many sources and periods, you will see in this diagram that the white tips of the temples represent the sutras that have not yet been translated. This is because the majority of the Indian commentaries and tantric texts are not yet available in Chinese. If we would like to have all of these texts translated into Chinese, we need a lot of skilled translators, Buddhist scholars, and Chinese writers to work together just as it was done in ancient China. One of our biggest issues at the moment is the clear shortage of qualified translators. To address this issue, we have developed an intensive training program to train the next generation of translators. We are continuously recruiting talented Chinese Buddhists and scholars to join our translation project or the training program. Additionally, improvements in technology are quickly advancing translation programs, and we hope to be able to use this modern technology to assist with the efficiency of our translation. We are so grateful to have a lot of dedicated Chinese Buddhists who are offering their time and resources to support this project. And you will see that with their help, we have made quite a lot of progress in the last two years. We have completed the Chinese translations of 16 sutras and three Indian commentaries in the Tibetan canon. With some talented students of Zongsai Kinsei Rinpoche, we have made music, audio, video, and illustrations to enhance the experience of our readers. And we have organized public teachings with some excellent scholars and senior translators. We are making small strides in our effort to follow in the footsteps of Kumara Jiva and hope you will join us on this journey. If you would like to know more about our work, please visit our website at www.ymfc.org. In conclusion, I would like to thank all of the Buddhist teachers and friends who have supported the Kumara Jiva project in the past few years. You are the strength behind this project, and we couldn't do it without you. Jennifer, you're muted. I hope you have enjoyed the short video, and Candace, I will give this back to you. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you, Jennifer. In commemoration of this auspicious day, we are pleased to have Zongsir Kinsey Rinpoche here today to bestow refuge and bodhisattva vows, followed by a short teaching. Before we invite Rinpoche to speak, let us put our palms together and chant in praise of the three jewels. Deepa, please lead us. Namo Buddhaya Guruvi Namo Dharmaya Daini Namo Sahaya Mahati Jibhyoti Satatam Namo Namo Fo Dao Shi Zun Nam Mo Fa Sheng Yi Hu Nam Mo Sung Zhong Zhong Zun Homage to the Buddha, the teacher. Homage to the Dharma, the protector. Homage to the great Sangha. To all these three, I continually offer homage. Now, with our palms folded together, let us take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Deepa, please. Bhutam Sharanam Gachami Dhammam Sharanam Gachami Sangham Sharanam Gachami Dutiyam Pe Bhutam Sharanam Gachami Dutiyam pidhammam sharanam gachami. Dutiyam pisangham sharanam gachami. Tatiyam pibuttham sharanam gachami. Tatiyam pidhammam sharanam gachami. Tatiyam pisangham sharanam gachami. Now, let us arouse bodhicitta. Yatha gruhitam sugate bodhicittam puratane te bodhisattva shikshaya Anupurya yatha sthitaha Tattva dutpadayami isha Bodhichittam jagatvite Tattva deva chata shikshaha Shikshishyami yatha kramam Ruchi wangshi chu ru lai Chong yu sheng qi pu ti xin Ru shi wei li yu qin gu Yuan wo yi fa pu ti xin just as Sugatas of the past gave birth to the enlightened mind and trained in all the stages of the Bodhisattva's disciplines, like them for every being's sake, I'll rouse the same enlightened mind, and in the precepts step by step I will abide and train myself. Thank you, everyone. Rinpoche, now we'd like to request you to bestow refuge in Bodhisattva vows and to give us a teaching. <coughs> okay, so, um, First of all, um, thank you for uh, inviting me to do this and taking this as a, my own merit. Um, for somehow becoming a vehicle for you to, for some of you tonight to understand and probably even take refuge in the Bodhisattva vow. <clears throat> um, 
and um, this is also um, a chance for us who have um, who already have taken refuge in the Bodhisattva vow to reconnect to the triple gem and the Bodhisattva path, especially on this uh, special day. <clears throat> um, more and more, many of us realize that Dharma is the only undeceiving source of refuge, object of refuge. Only through giving ourselves to the truth, we will then find some peace temporarily and liberation ultimately. Until then, no matter how much progress we make uh, materially, economically, politically, one way or another, we are always going to be bound. We are always going to be entangled and keep on bumping ourselves into some sort of a disappointment. And I think now more than ever, the disappointment comes very fast because we have become efficient, you know, Technologically, we have become efficient. Unfortunately or fortunately, we have so much information available. I mean, basically, um, you get to know what's happening in Bronx, New York while you are in Bhutan, like within a moment, right? So this efficiency also makes our anxiety very efficient. And along with that, we get, real, we get alienated faster. We get, we become direction, direction less faster and very vicious. So more and more, I mean, if you pay some attention, you will realize that only surrendering, not just partially, but wholeheartedly to the Dharma, the truth, one will have some sort of a solace. And um, since we learned, and then once we learn to trust and surrender to the Dharma, we then 
automatically have admiration to the teacher, the Buddha. And the system or the community that also that upholds or that shares this truth. So this is why Buddha, Dharma and the Sangha are the unfathomable, undeceiving, never failing object of refuge. So with this in mind, even though we have already in Deepa and um, the friends, other friends have wonderfully led us through the refuge and the bodhicitta earlier. Once again, uh, let us take the refuge. Um, and since we will be taking the Bodhisattva vow uh, as a foundation to take the Bodhisattva vow. It is like indispensable, like the refuge is, refuge vow is indispensable. So I myself, even though, you know, I am somewhat um, appearing as a preceptor right now, but actually I like to consider I'm taking refuge together with you, especially today, because it's a special day. Um, we will all think that the Buddha is in front of us. Just merely thinking that he's in front of us, that will just merely, just a mere thought of thinking that he's in front of us has, has already um, materialized, so to speak, the Buddha in front of us. This is what Buddha himself stated in many sutras. Because at the end of the day, in, in Buddhism, and especially in the Mahayana Buddhism, Buddha is really not uh, historically bound as in, you know, Buddha was born in India. He achieved under the, in, uh, he, he achieved enlightenment under the body tree, so on and so forth. The Buddha is none other than this mind, this cognizance, this very knower, this awareness, one that is doing the talking, one that is doing the listening. That mind, without, a, when, when that mind is left alone, uncontaminated by all kinds of fabrication, this very naked, uncontrived mind is the Buddha. So because of that, even just the mere thought of the Buddha if you like, invokes the Buddha right in front of you. So let us think of this for a few moments. And for those who are like me, you know, 
still bound by symbol, some sort of a tangible, you know, like physical, you know, we, we love to have some sort of a tangible um, Buddha. So for those of us, I like to just show you a statue of the Buddha in the thinking that this Buddha, this statue is not bronze or gold or silver, but in fact, the Buddha Shakyamuni standing, sitting, walking, however you wish, thinking that, please do three prostrations. And then please fold your palms together and repeat this verses that takes refuge three times. Changchuk Ningpur Chiji Bar Sanje Namla. Chapsu Chi Chodong Changchuk Sampa Yi Toglang Dejin Chapsu Chi Changchuk Ningbor Chi Ji Bar Sanje Namla Chapsu Chi Chodong Changchuk Sampa Yi Toglong Dejin Chapsu Chi Changchuk Ningbor Chiji Bar Sanje Namla Chapsu Chi Chodong Changchuk Sampa Yi Toglong Dejin Chapsu Chi So with this um, the recitation of the three times, basically what you are saying is you are, I take refuge to Buddha, I take refuge to Dharma, and I take refuge to Sangha. <clears throat> and with this, you should consider that you have taken refuge to the triple gem. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about refuge. Um, sometimes, I feel that there's several different kinds of misunderstanding. Uh, some people seem to think that like refuge is a bit like a Christian, you know, you know, you know like baptizing, I think, baptism. Um, I don't know whether, I, I don't, uh, you, you can judge yourself after I explain. Um, I mean, also, generally, we, we have been told that when you take refuge to Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha, 
that is the time you become Buddhist. Yes, I mean, broadly speaking, you can say that's correct. But I want you to think about it after I explain to, explain to you what our attitude towards refuge should be. And um, also, there's a subsequent mindset that once you take refuge, then you kind of have to do a homework, like every day you are supposed to do at least a refuge recitation certain amount of the time. I'm sure you have heard something like this from certain teachers and it I, I, will, I will not refute that because it is a skillful means. It's, it's, I mean, many times that teachers tell us these things because, you know, one tell you are, one tell, one tells somebody who wants to follow a certain discipline, okay, you need to do this every day. I mean, even in the explanation of the refuge, we hear things like, um, as someone who has taken refuge to the Buddha, one is not supposed to then take refuge to anyone uh, who is not enlightened as an ultimate object of refuge. In other words, I mean, if you have taken refuge to Buddha, then it doesn't really make sense that you take refuge to something like, let's say, a God of trees or God of water or, you know, like, um, we are talking about object, you know, ultimate object of refuge. Of course, you know, relative object of refuge, I, I, I think there's not, not, um, no problem here. Um, so sometimes these kind of um, ideas, I think, derail our idea of refuge. Here is something that I wanted to share. Just this is, this is, I'm sure many of you have heard this thousands of times, but um, I wanted to emphasize this. So let's say some of you today you have never taken refuge. This is the first time you are taking refuge to Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. And some of you, you are doing this with this mindset that, okay, all compounded things are impermanent. You know, everything that is made, compounded, created are impermanent. That's the truth. And I surrender to that. I am not, that, that's it. That's, that's the sort of the final truth. You know, it's a bit like all fire is hot. There's no doubt that maybe sometimes the fire becomes cold. Or, you know, some, you know, all water, as long as it's a water, is wet. That is the truth, right? And this truth, we accept and we surrender to this truth. And this is why if you don't want to get wet, you don't go to wa water. That's the benefit. Or if you want to get wet, then you, you go, go under the water. So you know what it is. What's what you get when you know the truth. You see, so fundamentally we are talking this, this simple 
this level of simplicity. And I want a lot of some of the new participants here to understand this. So today, if some of you have really come to a conclusion, yes, all compounded things are, you know, impermanent and all nothing in our life that is, you know, nothing in our life, especially uh, that is uh, something to do with our emotion will give us ultimate satisfaction. Okay, it might give us a little bit of satisfaction for a day or two or even a year or two, but 100% unchanging satisfaction is not going to happen. So if some of you sort of accept that, this is a this is you know this is the truth. This is the you know this is the truth that I'm surrendering to. And then also everything is just my projection, actually. As long as I am, you know, whatever, you know, things like good, bad, right, wrong, all these are just my projection. It does not exist outside, independent from your projection. So if you can surrender to that truth. So today, if some of you have done that with a really rational mind, with a sober mind, and then you think, yes, this makes sense. This is unfailing. It's never going to be like one day when you wake up, some compounded things become permanent. And it's never going to become like that. So it's unfailing. So if you can really surrender to that truth, and therefore you then also have a strong admiration to someone who taught that, which is the Buddha. And then you like this guy, wow, he really found a he really nailed it, you know, like, like the Americans say, you know, he nailed it, he really found the truth. And that's, you know, it's not like because Buddha said everything, everything is impermanent, suddenly everything became per impermanent. It's not that. Buddha taught that truth. So you are impressed, you know, like this is what how human beings work. We love, we like, we respect, we admire someone who really makes sense, who gives us a, you know, sensible ideas, ways, path, solutions. We love them, we respect them. That's natural. So some of you, you today, you think, oh yeah, this is good. He's right. And then also you, you know, associating with the community or the system that believes in this truth. Basically, if you have that, after tonight, some of you may never chant this refugee prayer ever, probably. What I'm saying is, you have taken refuge. Okay, so after this, then you decide. Yes, it is true that when you do that, you become a Buddhist, but it's not really something like a baptism. I don't think so. It's really basically in Buddhism, taking refuge is really a ceremony. It's like a, what do you call it? rite of passage, you know, suddenly you become adult, right? Rite of passage, you know, some cultures have this, then suddenly you, oh, now I've become man, now I've become a woman, now finally I wake up to something. So for some of you, maybe this is your rite of passage, sort of, wow, 
Yeah, okay. The another thing is, and many of you right after this refuge and right after accepting that everything is impermanent or compounded things are impermanent, you will forget it. Of course. You will forget it. It's not going to be like you are going to sort of think about this. That does not mean that you suddenly become not Buddhist when you are not, when you have forgotten about this, you know? It's a bit like, you know, in our life, many times we forget a certain truth. You know, that's because we get distracted so much. But if you again sort of tune yourself, you recollect, ah, I've taken, you know, I know this. I just forgot about it. So this is why, you know, in Buddhism, there are practices such as recollection of the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. Recollection, they call it. There's even a sutra. So you're trying to remember, you know, this is why we chant the refuge prayers also. It's, it's really to remember, sort of, you know, it's a bit like, let's say, you know, that water is wet. But suddenly, I don't know, the ceiling fall on your head, a little bit of dam brain damage, and then dementia, and then you forgot the water is wet. So then probably you, you walk in the shower with your full suit. That can happen, of course. But then you, you remind, someone remind you or you remind, no, no, no. If I go to under shower with my full, you know, I'm going to get wet because the truth is water is wet. So this is something that I wanted to share. Anyway, many of you have heard this millions of times. I'm, I'm sorry, um, those who are already getting bored hearing broken record again and again. Um, now the bodhicitta, which is a tonight, today's sort of the main ingredient, so to speak. So since we have taken the refuge, now we, are, we have a ground to take the bodhisattva vow. And I really urge you, I really encourage you to take the Bodhisattva vow. This is a one vow that there is no reason to not take. I mean, this is the most, this is the most beautiful vow. It's more beautiful, it's more beautiful vow than I will take a vow to build 100 hospital. I will vow not to kill, not to steal, not to lie. They're all very, very beautiful. But this one is a million times more beautiful. Why? Because this is a vow to awaken sentient beings to the truth that we have been talking earlier. Because that's the best gift you can give. Yes, of course, 100 hospitals, fantastic. I'm sure it will help a lot of people, but there's still going to be sick people. And then beside that, there's so many, many other problems. You know, hospitals can really make you win a prize for being the greatest philanthropist, and that could really shoot your ego up to the ceiling. You know, so that kind of thing can happen. But Wow. I mean, it's like a mother, a mother can give a baby a toy or a sweet to temporarily dampen the, I don't know, tantrum or a sadness or the demand of a baby. Fine or say nice things, stroke, you know. But mother also, 
more importantly, mother will like to tell the baby the truth, right? Eventually, the mother is always trying to tell the truth. I mean, this is happening actually in a very, very uh, profound way. Just recently, I was with uh, women who have uh, children and the children are already asking about death. And I have noticed that many times the parents, they, some, they try to sort of uh, cover it up. That's, that's a little risky, you know, that's, that's like, children are going to find these things out. But I understand the parents don't want to talk about death. If a, you know, like a girl of six years old girl is already talking about, you know, death, that's, you know, it's very awkward, I, I understand. But um, sooner or later, a parent has to tell the child, you know, there is things like, I don't know the truth, basically. So wishing to awaken sentient beings to the truth, this is the quintessence of the Bodhisattva vow. So please, I encourage you to take this vow. So again, please think that all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are in front of you. And again, for those who wish to have some sort of an image, I'm going to have the um, um, Buddha statue on the screen. And um, please recite what I, what I say. Chitar Nganji Deshe Chi Changchup Tugni Jeba Tang Changchup Sempi Klapala Deda Rimjin Nepa Tar Dejin Dola Pendendu Changchup Semni Jeji Shing Dejin Duni Lapa Lang Jimba Jindu Labar Ji. Okay, so that's first recitation. We will do two, two more, two more, okay, two more times. This is first, we have already done one. But I want to say, <coughs> I want to say a few more words about Bodhicitta. I'm sure many of you want to live long. I'm sure that's why you take those vitamins. That's why you go to gym, right? That's why you go walk. That's why you go to, I don't know, like, I'm sure you all want to be looking good, living long, right? Longevity. Do you really want to live long? Now I'm telling you, if you want to live long, you should take the Bodhisattva vow. The reason is you need a big vision as your project so that your driving and the will to live long is worthy and good. I mean, let's say if you, if your vision is just to, I don't know, just to, um, cook omelette. Why would you want to live long? Okay, maybe for about a year you want to cook omelette again and then again. But after a while, then that's you know it's so it's so sad, right? It's so boring. You need a big project. You really need a big project so that you will, you will drive your force. You know, there's a driving force that's, you know, the energy. So this is why you need to take the Bodhisattva vow if you want to live long. So please take the Bodhisattva vow again. One more time. Jitar Nganji. Deshe ji. 
Changchup Tubni Jeba Tang Changchup Sempi Labala Teda Rimjin Neba Tar Tejin Dola Pendendu Changchup Semni Jeji Shing Tejin Tuni Labalang Rimba Jindu Labarji Okay, again, I want to say some other things why you should take the Bodhisattva vow. I'm sure many of you want to magnetize people. I'm very sure you want people to like you, right? You want people, you want to seduce people, you want to, you know, sort of, I don't know, you want to sort of make people like you. Don't you? I mean, otherwise, why, why there's this Prada, Hermes, perfumes, all this, you know, like a hair shampoo, why? All this is so that people will like you. Yeah, yeah, of course, you should use those Prada, Gucci, hairstyle, nail polish, please, don't stop, do that. But the real, formula that will make people like you, not just few neighbors, whole sentient beings liking you now. Can you, can you imagine this? Ghosts, gods, demons, nagas, they all liking you and liking you genuinely, not just like social kind of, you know, etiquette liking you, you understand? They're really liking you. This can only happen if you have a genuine wish to awaken others. So with this in mind, please take the Bodhisattva vow again. Jitar Nguyenji, Deshe Ji, Changchup Thumni, Jeba Tang, Changchup Sembi Lapa La Teda Rimjin Napa Tar Tejin Rola Pendendu Changchup Semni Jeji Shing Tejin Duni Lapa Lang Rimba Jindu Labarji Okay, one more, and this is the last one. One more reason why you should take the Bodhisattva vow. I'm sure many of you are afraid of death. After death, then what? You know what I mean? Death and then what? Ah, take Bodhisattva vow. This is just a beginning. Taking the Bodhisattva means after death, more work. There's a lot more things to do. This is just the beginning. So your attitude towards the death will be like, you know, like this, I'm wearing this. And my attitude, you know, like your attitude towards the death will be like, oh, needs a bit of a laundry situation here. Take off and you are looking forward to buy, you know, put on your new shirt. Like that, because you know, you want to go on more, continue. So have the Bodhisattva vow because you want to awaken sentient beings. And you should not think like a, you know, sort of a small minded, sort of a only, you know, because. You know, some of me, you may think, oh, you know, I don't want to come back here. It's just too tiring. You know, gosh, you know, I, I really just can't handle the traffic. I can't handle the domestic problem. Don't think like that. Because it just means that you don't understand the sort of, you, you, you haven't understood how to have fun, so to speak. It's a bit like, you know, if you know, if you like playing mahjong, let's say, staying, staying the whole night, it's not a problem. 
you almost like it, right? So, or if you can really develop this wish to awaken sentient beings, coming to this samsara again and again, even going to the hell realm, it's a fun, you will do it. You know, as Shantideva said, Shantideva said, like a swan gliding into the lotus pond, you will come. So with this attitude, please take the Bodhisattva vow. I'm sorry, this has become the fourth because I'm a little bit disorganized, but let's do it again. Why not? Chitar Ngunji. Deshe chi changchup tuni cheba tang changchup sembi labala teda rimjin nepatar tejin dola hendendu changchup semni che jishin tejin tuni labalang rimba jindu labarji. Okay, now I will I will say a few words. So please contemplate on this. Today, so you should think. Today, my life has become fruitful. Today, I have become the child of the Buddha, heir of the heir to the Buddha. like a beggar, like a destitute, blind beggar, bumping into a treasure mine. Today, amidst these emotions, I have bumped into this mind to awaken sentient beings. And now declare this to all sentient beings, especially gods and asudas. There's a, there's a story that every time we take bodhisattva vow, the asudas and the gods, they're extra happy. So please declare this by thinking, today I have become the servant to the sentient beings and the Buddhas. Therefore, O oh gods and asuras, rejoice. And now think that may I be the guide for those who are lost. May I be a lamp in the darkness. May I be a bridge to cross. May I be a boat to go across the ocean. May I be medicine for those who are ill. In whatever form or shape, may I be useful so that sentient beings, so that I will lead them to the awakening state. <clears throat> since, you, since this is a very special occasion, because we have taken the refuge and the Bodhisattva vow, let me now recite some auspicious verses. Pisons <laughs> 
Ciao, <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you. So we will now begin our mini Mong Lam, where we will be reciting the Heart Sutra, the Sutra of the Three Heaps, and Samantabhadra's King of Aspiration Prayers. We will be reciting in Sanskrit, English, and Chinese in the main room, but please feel free to recite in your own language. The link to download the prayers in French, Japanese, Russian, Portuguese, and Spanish is in the chat box. Please understand that some prayers might not be available in your language yet. In that case, please follow the recitation in the main room. The English and Chinese text on the screen is available for download in the chat box and will also be available for download on the Kumara Jiva website. The term Monglan means the path of aspiration. As we recite, let us generate the aspiration in our hearts to liberate all sentient beings from suffering, for all to be their own masters and to achieve enlightenment. Deepa, please lead us with the Heart Sutra. Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Namaha Sarvajnaya. Aryav Lokiteshwar Bodhisattva Gambhirayam Prajnaparantayam Charyam Charmano Vyavalokayatisma Panchaskandha Tashasvabha Shunyam Pashyatisma Ihashari putra rupam shunyata shunyate varupam rupana prithak shunyata shunyataya na prithak rupam yadrupam sa shunyata ya shunyata tadrupam eva meva vedana sanya Sanskar Vignanani Chashunyata Iham Shari Putra Sarvadharma Shunyata Lakshana Anutpanna Anirutta Amalana Vimala Anuna Napari Purna Pasma Shari Putra
न चक्षुषोज घ्राण जीवा काय मनासी न रूप शब्द गंधरस स्पृष्ट व्यधर्मा न चक्षुर्धातुर्यावन्न मनो धातु न विद्या न विद्या न विद्या क्षयो न अविद्या क्षयो यावन्न जरा मरण न जरा मरण क्षयो न दुख समुदय निरोध मार्ग न ज्ञान न प्राप्ति न अप्राप्ति तस्मापुत्र विपर्यासातिक्रांतो निष्ठ निर्वाण प्राप्त व्यवस्थिता महामंत्रो महाविद्या महाविद्यामंत्रो अनुतर मंत्रो असम समंत्र सर्व दुख प्रश्मन सत्यम मिथ्यवाजापारमिताया मुक्त मंत्र गते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाहा तथाओं गते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाह गते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधि स्वाह प्रज्ञा पारमिताशय सूत्र सामतम ठांग सन जंग फाशि शुन जंग यी गुन जि जै तु सिंग सन बो रो बो लो मि दो शि चौ जैन उ युन जे खोंग दु इ चे खु अ शे लि जि सो बु यी खोंग खोंग बु यी सो सो जि शि खोंग खोंग जि शि सो सो सियांग सिंग शि यी फु रु शि शे लि जि शि जु फा खोंग सियांग बु सन बु मे不垢不净，不增不减。是故空中无色，无受想行识，无眼耳鼻舌身意，无色身香味触法，无眼界，乃至无意识界。无无明，亦无无明境，乃至无老死，亦无老死境。无苦集灭道，无智亦无得，以无所得故。菩提萨埵依般若波罗蜜多故，心无挂碍，无挂碍故，无有恐怖，远离颠倒梦想，究竟涅槃。三世诸佛依般若波罗蜜多故，得阿耨多罗三藐三菩提。故知般若波罗蜜多是大神咒，是大明咒，是无上咒。是无等等咒，能除一切苦，真实不虚。故说般若波罗蜜多咒，即说咒曰：嘎呆嘎呆，巴拉嘎呆，巴拉僧嘎呆，菩提萨哈。The Sutra, the heart of transcendent knowledge. Thus have I heard. Once a blessed one was dwelling in Raja Griha at Vulture Peak Mountain, together with a great gathering of the Sangha of monks and a great gathering of 
Sangha Bodhisattvas at that time the Blessed One entered the Samadhi, expresses the Dharma called profound illumination, and at the same time noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasava, while practicing the Prajna Paramita saw in this way he saw the five skandhas to be empty of nature, then through the power of the Buddha, Venerable Shari Buddha said to noble Lokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasava, how should a son or daughter of noble family train who wishes to practice the profound Prajna Paramita addressed in this way, noble? Kiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasava, said to Venerable Shari Puja, O Shari Puja, son or daughter of noble family who wishes to practice the Prabham Prajnapara, should see in this way, seeing the five skandhas to be empty of nature, form is emptiness, emptiness also is form, emptiness is no other than form, form is than emptiness in the same way feeling perception formation and consciousness are emptiness ashari puja all dharmas are ness there are no characteristics there is no birth and no cessation there is no impurity and no purity there is no decrease and no crease therefore shari puja and emptiness there is no form no feeling no perception no formation no consciousness no eye no ear no nose no tongue no mind no appearance no sound no smell no taste no touch no dharmas no i dot to of do no mind dot to no dot to of dharmas no mind consciousness dot to no ignorance no end of ignorance of no old age and death no end of old age and death no suffering no origin of suffering no cessation of suffering no path no wisdom Attainment and no non-attainment, therefore Shari Puja, since the Bodhisattvas have no attainment, they abide by means of Prajna Paramita, since there is no Asya, no mind, there is no fear, they transcend falsity and attain complete Nirvana, all the Buddhas of the three times by means of Prajna Paramita, fully awake, to unsurpassable, true, complete enlightenment, therefore the great mantra of Prajna Paramita, the mantra of great insight, the unsurpassed mantra, unequaled mantra, the mantra that calls all suffering to be known as truth, since there is no deception. The Paramita mantra is said in this way Om Gate Gate Para Gate Para Sam Gate Bodhiswaha. The Shari Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasava, should train in the program Prajna Paramita, then the blessed. Blessed One arose from that Samadhi and praised Navalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasava, saying, Good, good, O son of noble family, thus it is, O son of noble family, thus it one should practice the program Prajna Paramita, just as you have taught, and all the Tathagatas will rejoice when the Blessed One had said this venerable. Pudra, noble Lava Loki Teshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasava, that whole assembly in the world with its gods, humans, Ashuras, and Gandharvas, rejoice and praise the words of the Blessed One. Next up, we will be reciting the Sutra of the Three Heaps, also known as Confession of the Bodhisattva's Downfalls to the 35 Buddhas. The English text we're using today is translated by 84,000. The Three Heaps is a part of the Sutra to Hoku 68, ascertaining the Vinaya Upali's questions. For the Chinese text, when the Kumara Jiva Project published a translation early this year, Rinpoche gave an illuminating teaching on the Sutra. He said that the Buddhist concept of confession is really different from the terms used in many other religions. He also reminded us that our motivation here is not only to confess our own downfall, but to benefit sentient beings. You may find the entire teaching on the Kumara Jiva's website. Now, Simi, please lead us with the Sutra of the Three Heaps. I seek refuge in the Buddha. I seek refuge in the Dharma. I seek refuge in the Sangha. 
I pay homage to Tathagata, the Arhat, the completely perfect Buddha Shakyamuni. I pay homage to Vajragarbha Pramardhan. I pay homage to Ratnarshish. I pay homage to Nageshwaraja. I pay homage to Veer Sena. I pay homage to Veer Nandan. I pay homage to Ratnagni. I pay homage to Ratnachandra Prabha. I pay homage to Amboga Darshan. I pay homage to Ratna Chandra. I pay homage to Vimala. I pay homage to Suradatta. I pay homage to Brahma. I pay homage to Brahma Datta. I pay homage to Varuna. I pay homage to Varuna Deva. I pay homage to Badrashri. I pay homage to Chandana Shri. I pay homage to Anantan Ananta Aujas. I pay homage to Prabha Shashri. I pay homage to Ashoka Shri. I pay homage to Narayana. I pay homage to Kusuma Shri. I pay homage to the Tathagata, Brahma Jyoti, Vikriditta Bijnaya. I pay homage to the Tathagata, Padma Jyoti, Vikriditta Bijnaya. I pay homage to the Nashri. I pay homage to Smirti Shri. I pay homage to Suparikirti Namadeya Shri. I pay homage to Indra Ketu Dvajraja. I pay homage to Suvikrantashri. I pay homage to Suvijit Sangramma. I pay homage to Vikra Rantagaman. I pay homage to Samantava Bhavu Ashri. I pay homage to Ratnapadma Vikramin. I pay homage to the Tathagata, the Arhat, the completely perfect Buddha, Ratnapadma. Supratishtit Salindraya Vajra. To them and to all the other Tathagata, Arhat and completely perfect Buddhas who dwell, live, and endure in all realms throughout the ten directions, to those blessed Buddhas I pray, please he, pay heed to me. In this and in all the other births that I have taken in samsara without beginning or end, I have committed evil actions. I have asked others to commit them or have rejoiced when they were committed. I have stolen the property of stupas, the property of the sangha, or the property of the sanghas of the four directions, have made others steal them or have rejoiced when they were stolen. I have committed the five grave acts of immediate retribution, have made others commit them or have rejoiced when they were committed. I have taken the path of the 10 non-virtuous actions, have made others take it or have rejoiced in their taking it. Having been affected by karmic obscurations, I will go to the hells, I will go to the animal realm, I will go to the preta realm, I will be born among barbarians in a border region, I will be born among the long-lived devas, I will have incomplete faculties, I will hold false views, or I will not be able to delight in the appearance of a Buddha in the world. All these karmic obscurations, I confess in the presence of the Bhagwan Buddhas, who are wise, who have vision, who witness, who are authoritative, and who know and see. I reveal these actions, I do not conceal them, and I will henceforth show restraint. May those Bhagwan Buddhas pay heed to me in this and all the other births that I have taken in samsara without beginning or end. Whatever gifts I have given, even if just a small bit of food to an animal, whatever roots of virtue I may possess from maintaining discipline, whatever roots of virtue I may possess from chaste conduct, whatever roots of virtue I may possess by bringing beings to maturity, whatever roots of virtue I may possess through the mind of awakening, and whatever roots of virtue I may possess through unsurpassed gnosis, I collect, combine, and coalesce all of it and dedicate it to the unsurpassed, completely perfect awakening by making unsurpassable, unexcelled and supreme dedications. Just as the Bhagwan Buddhas of the past have dedicated, just as the Bhagwan Buddhas of the future will dedicate, and just as the Bhagwan Buddhas of the present now dedicate, in the same way I also dedicate the virtue. I confess all evil actions. I rejoice in all merit. I supplicate all Buddhas. May my gnosis be unsurpassed. With folded hands, I seek refuge in all the conquerors, the most supreme beings of the present, of the past, and who have not yet come. 
who possess the notion of qualities limitless and praiseworthy. Now we will be reciting what we call the Samantha Bhadra's King of Aspiration Prayers, which is also known as Samantha Bhadra's Prayer for Good Conduct or Zancho Monglang. This prayer actually forms the conclusion of a much longer sutra known as the Stem Array or Ganda Vyuha. In turn, the Stem Array forms the 45th and the final chapter of the Buddha Vatamsaka Sutra. The Stem Array tells the beautiful story of a young layman Sudana and his quest for awakening through encountering a variety of spiritual teachers. 
I'm so pleased to share that 84,000 will be publishing an English translation of the sutra in its entirety on their new mobile app for iOS and Android in less than a day. I'm also happy to announce that we'll have the opportunity to get a sneak peek at 84,000's translation of the Prayer for Good Conduct, which we'll be using for today's session. We'll be reciting the first 12 verses of the prayer, which is the seven branch offering. Deepa, please take it away. Yavat ke chi dash dish loke sarvajiyat vagatanar simha tana ho vandami sarvi ashesha kaya tu vaj mani na prasanna ho Chitra Rajopa Mukaya Pramani Pranamam Serva Jina Bhimukena Manena Bhadra Chari Pranidhana Balena Ekar Chagri Rajopa Mabut Buddh Sutan Nishan Kumati Evam Sheshat Dharmat Dhatum Sarvati Mochami Purnaji Nebhi Deshu Cha Akshaya Varn Samudran Sarvasvarang Samudra Rudra Serva Gina and a good on Padamana Stan Sugatas to me of Sarivan Pushpa Vare Pichamaya Vare Pivadia Vile Panacha Deep Vare Pichat Hoopa Vare Pujanate Shujina Nakaromi Vastra Vare Picha Gantha Vare Pish, Jurna Pute Picha Mirusamibi Serva Vishish to be Uhavare Pi, Pujanate Shujina Nakaromi Tanadimuchamisarvajinanam Kaya to watch a money in a dead haver, dumb pretty day, shy me a who said them. Yet Jadasha, the sheep on your jagasya, shake shua, shake shua, pretty kajinana. Buddha sutan at the servajinana, dumb no more Ye chadasha di shilok pradipa, bodhi vi buddha sangat praptaha. Tana hu servi adhesha minathan, chakra anutar vartanatai. Ye pichaniriti darshi tukama, stana piachami pranjali putaha. Chetra Rajopam Kalpasti Hetum Serva Jagasya Hitaya Sukhaya Vandana Pujana Deshanataya Modana Deshana Yachanataya Yacha Shupam Mai Sanjitu Kinjit Bodhai Namaya Mi Ahusarvam
，所有十方世界中，三世一切人师子，我以清净身与意，一切便理尽迷迷，普贤行愿威神力，普现一切如来前，一身复现刹成身，一一便理刹成佛。于一城中成数佛，各处菩萨众会中，无尽法界成亦然，深信诸佛皆充满，各以一切因生海，普出无尽妙言辞，尽于未来一切劫，赞佛甚深功德海，以诸最胜妙华曼，祭月涂香及散盖。如是最胜庄严句，我以供养诸如来。最胜衣服，最胜香，墨香、烧香与灯烛，一一皆如妙高句。我悉供养诸如来。我以广大圣解心，深信一切三世佛，悉以普贤行愿力，普遍供养诸如来。我昔所造诸恶业，皆由无始贪嗔痴，从身与意之所生，一切我今皆忏悔。十方一切诸众生，二乘有学及无学，一切如来与菩萨，所有功德皆随喜。十方所有世界灯，最初成就菩提者。我今一切皆劝请，转于无上妙法轮，请佛诸佛若欲是涅盘，我须至诚而劝请，唯愿久住刹成劫，利乐一切诸众生，所有礼赞供养福，请佛注视转法轮，随喜忏悔诸善根，回向众生及佛道。However many lions among men there are in the three times and the worlds and the ten directions, I pay homage to them with all the, all without exception, with purity of body, speech, and mind, thinking that all the jinnas are before me with the power of the prayer of good conduct. I bow down toward all the jinnas with as many bodies as there are atoms in the realms. There are as many Buddhas. As atoms within a single atom, seated in the midst of bodhisattvas, I focus on the entire realm of phenomena, without exception, being filled by jinas. In that way, I recite a praise of all the sugatas, enumerating the qualities of all the jinas, with unending oceans of eulogies and the sound of oceans of every quality of voice. I make an offering to those jinas of perfect flowers. Perfect garlands, perfect music, ointments and parasols, perfect lights and perfect incenses. I make offerings to those jinnas of perfect clothing and perfect perfumes, pouches of scented powders equal to Mount Meru, and all perfect sublime displays. Offerings that are unsurpassable and exalted, I am resolved to offer to all the jinnas. I praise and make offerings to all the jinnas through the power of devotion to good conduct. Conduct. Whatever bad actions I have done, under the power of desire, anger, and ignorance, with my body, speech, and mind, I make a confession of them all. I am rejoicing in the entirety of merit in the ten directions that is created by beings, by practicing and accomplished pratyeka buddhas, by the bodhisattvas, and by all the jinas. I make the request to all the lords, the lamps. To the worlds and the ten directions, who have attained without impediment the enlightenment of Buddhahood, that they turn the unsurpassable wheel with palms placed together. I supplicate those who wish to manifest passing into Nirvana, that they remain for as many kalpas as there are atoms in the realms, for the benefit and happiness of all beings. Whatever little virtue I have accumulated through homage, offering, confession. Rejoicing, supplication, and entreating, I dedicate it all to enlightenment.
Thank you, everyone. So the English, Chinese, and the Sanskrit text that we've been using today will be available for download on the Kumara Jiva's website. So everybody, please check back tomorrow. Now let us recite the concluding prayers of auspiciousness, dance of wisdom and love, which is the long life prayer of Zongzir Kinsei Rinpoche and the dedication prayer. Simi. May the teachers, the glory of the teachings live long. May the holders of the teachings cover the entire earth. May the power and prosperity of the patrons of the teachings increase. May all be auspicious for the teachings to endure. 愿上师勤教法常注释,持教行者遍满全世界,教法施主全才恒增长,祈愿教法吉祥久注释。Dance of wisdom and love, sovereign of the entire Buddhist teaching, the great Dharma ocean of the transmission and realization of the profound and vast, you have mastered through hearing, reflecting, and meditating, supreme incarnation, may your aspirations be fulfilled, and may your life and activity be infinite. Om Swasti, by this merit, may all attain omniscience, may it defeat the enemy wrongdoing from the stormy waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death, from the ocean of samsara, may all beings be free. 以此功德正变之,无有一丈诸委员,离生老病死波涛,愿众生出轮回海。As long as space remains, as long as the world remains, may I too remain to alleviate the sufferings of the world. 乃至有虚空,以及众生住,愿无住世间, Agashasya stitihi avat Yavat jaha jagataha stitihi Tavam mama stitihi bhuyat Jagatukhani nignataha Tavam mama stitihi bhuyat Jagadukhani Nignataha Tavam Mama Stitihi Boya Jagadukhani Nignataha. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today from around the world. We sincerely apologize for the unexpected technical issues, and we really appreciate your patience and understanding. Let us aspire that very soon we can all gather in person and recite these prayers under the Bodhi tree at the Mahabodhi Temple in Bodhigaya with Dongzhar Kinsei Rinpoche. Before we wrap up our event today, we're excited to share with you the latest updates from the Lighting the Mahabodhi project. Prashant, the project director, will take us through it. Hello, Prashant. Thank you, Can I thank you Candice. Uh, good evening to all the Sangha. Good evening from Beer. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank all the countless Sangha in every part of the world who have supported this sublime vision and intent of Zongsa Kensi Rinpoche and for us in Siddhartha's intent, India, to have this opportunity to serve and execute this intention into action. As you all know, we commenced the project in 2019 of month of March and it's been over two years. Of course, we were meant to finish the project last year, but due to the pandemic, we have experienced over five to six months of lockdown on the construction site. But in these two, two and a half years, we have already, I think, close to installed 1,500 lights um, in over probably 40 to 50 locations in the whole Mahabodhi temple complex. 
We have laid over six kilometers of electrical infrastructure and uh, there is a brand new sound system. So we are really eager and excited to complete this project by December and also uh, to sort of make sure the offering is intact for, long, for the long run. We would be looking after the maintenance of the site for another two to three years. So we are very excited, hoping that we all can converge soon physically at the Bodhi tree and uh, experience these sacred offerings, which have born out of our teacher's vast intention. So thank you all. Thank you, Prashan. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. May our gathering on this auspicious day plant the seeds for Buddha Dharma to spread and flourish. We hope to see you again soon. Stay safe and well. Bye. Dharma he took Prabhava. He took the sham tatagato. Yavadat the sham chayoni road. He vambadi maha. Yavadat <laughs> 